What's the difference between all the regular photographers worldwide and that 1% photographers that are on the absolute top of photography? Today we reveal why that top 1% photographers get over 40% of the revenue within the photography branch. And it doesn't matter what branch of photography you are in, whether it's portrait, weddings, landscape or street photography, I have researched what makes these photographers stand out and put it into this video so you and me both can learn from it. And be sure to watch till the end of this video because it it will change the way you think about your photography. How come most of us grind away and compete in a big swamp filled with competition while the creme de la creme, the cream de la crop, the top of the food chain photographers seem to be able to just lean back, choose what products they do and watch the stacks of money pile up. What sets that 1% so far apart from the rest that they don't seem to be worried about getting jobs or recognition? What are they doing different? First let's talk about something more important. Let's address a couple of misconceptions that people often think are important but actually aren't such as having a large social media following it is true that many top photographers have a lot of followers but their success isn't solely dependent on that the foundation of their career lies in their photography itself and the followers are just a byproduct of their talent and skill if we judge the success of a photographer only based on metrics such as followers and subscribers we won't find the best photographers we'll find those who excel at playing the social media game. So what defines the top 1% of photographers? How do we measure something like true success in photography? Success is subjective, just like the notion of good photos. However, for the purpose of this video, let's consider the top 1% of photographers as those who are highly respected within the photography community, earn a substantial income, and have the freedom to express their creative vision. Well, I believe that Johnny McJohnny is the best photographer in the world. His photography is genuine and authentic compared to those commercial sellouts. All these kids these days with their Peter McVillan and Sean Fucker. They don't know what good photography truly is and I do. Johnny McJohnny is a talented artist and it takes a talented artist to recognize that. Well, of course, it's perfectly fine to be a fan of Johnny McJohnny and his photos may indeed be exceptional. However, my point is that the top 1% of photographers go beyond being very talented artists. They have reached the pinnacle of their genre. Everyone wants to collaborate with them, emulate their style or achieve similar success. Everybody knows the top photographers at their genre. They just run the show. And that's what sets them apart as the top 1%. I often hear photographers talk about another photographer who is extremely successful in their field. And this person sells many books, gets a lot of deals and sells a lot of prints. And some photographers tend to downplay their achievements, saying that what they are doing isn't really exceptional. Bro, let me tell you, that guy's just a one trick pony. He's only successful because he's good at advertising. Did you know his father paid for his first camera? Talk about getting it the easy way. Let me tell you, bro, he's not even a real photographer. He has a team, they do everything for him. He just comes in, presses the shutter button. Woo, impressive. And he only shoots digital. What a dinosaur. It's possible that these kinds of remarks stem from a hint of envy. It's important to remember that just because someone is skilled at sharing their story or marketing their work, doesn't mean that they aren't talented photographers as well. Now, let's reveal their secrets. And spoiler alert, it has nothing to do with photo editing, compositional techniques, or with camera brands. The top 1% of photographers distinguish themselves from the rest through a combination of skill, experience, creativity, and professional. They have a deep understanding of the technical aspects of photography. They know how to use their equipment effectively and they can adapt to various shooting situations. But that probably applies to you too. But here are four things that might be different. These photographers often have a very unique and distinct style and they are better at holding on to that style. They possess a creative eye and are skilled at capturing compelling and visually striking images within their own style. They have a knack for finding interesting perspectives using in color and light creatively and telling stories through their photographs. Take Dutch master Bastian Wout for instance. His photos have such a strong visual signature and he is so good at holding on to that visual signature that when you come across one of his photos you instantly recognize it 
as a Bastian Wout photograph. And then there's experience and adaptation. Many top photographers have years of experience in the field. They have taken a lot more photos and have been in a lot more challenging situations than the average enthusiast. And even though I don't think that you have to be a certain age or have been practicing a certain amount of years to be considered a top photographer, but it does really take some time to get through that learning curve. The top photographers are very good at adapting their way of working to their circumstances and they know and understand their equipment and the situation. They can adapt to challenges on the fly. Top photographers have a unique perspective or niche that sets them apart from others. They develop a recognizable style and subject specialization that helps them stand out in a crowded market. And they apply this not only to their photography but also to themselves. They become their own sales pitch. Take Dutch photographer William Rutte for instance. He is a celebrity portrait photographer. But from that foundation, he now hosts a TV show, a theater tour, and he does a lot of exhibitions. So not only are his photos portraits of celebrities, no, we all know him as the celebrity portrait photographer. This week I was out shooting with my friend and fellow street photographer Michiel Heimans, and I asked him what he thinks about reaching the top of your photography niche. Well, the thing is that as Henri Cartier-Bresson said, you, your first 10,000 pictures are shit, so you really have to put in some effort. I think just going out there and, and making all those photographs will eventually improve your game and that will lead to, to some recognition at one point. Michiel also wrote a book about street photography, so let's ask him how he feels about using other tools such as books to become a household name in your photography niche. Yes. I did write a book. For me, the writing the book was an important step in my uh, photography journey, um, especially because I think that, um, like exhibitions and things like that, a book gives you some kind of credit, in this case, perhaps street credit. When I do workshops, uh, people get the book afterwards. When I uh, talk to someone, as we're speaking right now, just knowing that I wrote the book and that someone let me write the book, so thought I was good enough to write the book, for me, it's a really, really nice validation. And I think for others, for the people that I talk to, it's also a validation that I did something well, did something good in that, uh, in that process. So um, the book is definitely something that gives you some kind of authority. And I think that's really important if you want to reach that 1% in the end. Being a top photographer requires more than just technical skills. It involves being professional, reliable and organized. Successful photographers understand the business sides of their profession, including marketing, networking, pricing, client management, and delivering exceptional customer service. And I know a lot of photographers, including me, are either not that good at this side of the work or they don't really like it as much, but don't underestimate the value of building your photography up as a business. And this includes having a strong network. Not only a network of other photographers, no, even more important, a network of other collaborators within your niche. Say for instance you're a wedding photographer. You should make friends with wedding planners, makeup artists, flower peoples, musicians who often perform at weddings. Those are the people that, once you have established a bond, will refer you to new couples that are getting married. And think about it, most couples that get married you get to work with one time. But most wedding planners and makeup artists, they will refer to you weekly. So my friend, it's time to define your niche, try to get to the pinnacle of your niche, treat your photography like a business and invest in your network. And maybe you will join that select few of top photographers. I know I have a long road to go. And if you want some more videos about creativity, you can check out this video right here because it will help you get more out of your photography. Peace!